we'll just go ahead with it okay. yes sure so welcome to the live session dr garima how are thank you thank you so much i am fine and how are you perfect i am doing amazing so for all the people who are new uh, thip media welcomes you welcome to today's live session which is brought to you by chi fit uh, india's leading women's health community so dr garima is with us she is a consultant gynecologist and she specializes in reproductive medicine she is also a lead ivf specialist at ivy hospital mohali so today she'll be explaining us all about vaginal infections aka vaginitis so uh dr garima welcome to the live session uh, uh my Thank very you. first question and the most basic question what is vaginal infection or vaginitis and how can i identify it okay uh, so uh, in scientific term if anything has itis in it it means inflammation so vaginitis means inflammation of the vagina it can be because of infection or it can be because of other factors also so normally also uh, so how do you identify it so uh, normally every every female has some or the other kind of vaginal discharge which is normal also so during a normal uh, menstrual cycle also we have different patterns of vaginal discharge so uh, normally like uh, in a normal female uh, the vaginal discharge can be thick or the sticky kind during the rest of the menstrual cycle but when the a female is ovulating that is in mid of the cycle the discharge can be watery or uh, very thin so uh, every woman has some of the other kind of vaginal discharge now how do you say that we have got the vaginal infection now how do we say that it is vaginitis and not a normal discharge so whenever any discharge changes its color or there is a change in the consistency or there is change in the smell or the odor and uh, the volume now previously you were having a slight amount of discharge now you have a very profuse kind of discharge which suggests that you might have some kind of vaginal infection the other things are if you have any uh, burning while you are passing urine or you have any other itchiness in the vulval or the perineal area or you have any redness in that area which suggests that you have some kind of vaginal infection and you should seek uh, your gynecologist okay and uh, what are the causes of it like how does it happen and how can we prevent it from happening in the regular days uh so causes are uh, there are several causes uh one thing uh, uh there are two kind of infection one is vaginitis and there is cervicitis so vagina at the end of the vagina there is something called as cervix which is the mouth of the uterus so any infection which is occurring either at the mouth of the uterus or in the vagina will have same kind of symptoms that is any uh, any uh, type of discharge so if you are talking about vaginitis Uh, so vaginal infection can be of majorly of three types which is bacterial vaginosis the second thing is very common if most of the people know that there is a fungal infection or the candidiasis and the third thing is trichomoniasis so these three things causes the vaginal infection they are the bacterial or the fungal infection and the second thing is the cervicitis which is the mouth of the cervix mouth of the uterus which is the cervix and which get inflamed or get infected the two most common causes are the gonorrhea or the chlamydia these are the normally known as the sexually transmitted diseases so these two categories are the one which mostly causes the vaginal discharge and uh, how can we prevent it in daily life uh, uh, one thing uh, i would like to clear Uh, there are a lot of uh, feminine hygiene product selling in the market so uh, normally all the vagina cleanses itself on its own you do not need any feminine hygiene product or you do not need any soap to be used daily the vagina cle- cleanses itself on a daily basis and you need just a plain water to clean it so uh, you by uh, using just um i mean uh, by daily cleaning yourself with just plain water or very mild unscented soap uh, you can prevent any kind of vaginal infection the other things are like um you should always uh, change your tampons or the pads every 4 to 6 hourly whenever you are menstruating then whenever you are having intercourse after intercourse you should have safe sexual practices like you should clean your perineal area after the sexual intercourse then uh, you should always uh, um 
whenever you are you whenever you're cleaning also the velval area you should clean from the front to the back area and not from the back to the front and other things are you should always use cotton panties or you should or, or if not cotton panties possible you should use at least cotton crotch panties uh, in these ways you can surely prevent the uh, regular uh, vaginal infections can these uh, infections also be transmitted through toilet seats uh not really uh, the these infections are not really transmitted uh, through the toilet seat but yes there are other infections which usually get transmitted to the, uh, through the common uh, public toilets uh, one of the most common is the urinary tract infection the utis and uh, so yes if not this you can get other infections by using a public toilet so you should always clean the toilet before sitting and uh, you should always uh, wash your uh, the perineal or the vulval area after using the public toilets okay so uh, you know very commonly asked questions are there any uh, lifestyle factors like sleep deprivation or you know stress that can contribute to an to an increased risk of developing vaginitis and if it's a yes then how much uh, uh yes any kind of stress either it is sleep deprivation induced or any kind of stress uh, maybe because of your workplace or any anything uh, can always lead to uh, the rise in the inflammatory markers and can always lead to increase in any kind of infection be it vaginal infection or any kind of infection in the body but per se if you are saying that direct cause of vaginitis is stress uh, it is uh, normally uh, uh, it is not relatable that way but yes any kind of stress can in lead to increase in the inflammation and can further increase your vaginitis if you already have that infection okay and i also had a question on you know specific hygiene tips which you've already covered so uh, are there any dietary tips that you would like to add that can you know help in preventing such infections so uh, as uh, we have been told always that we should always have a very balanced diet uh, uh, i will not go into that that what is a balanced diet or anything but yes to prevent a vaginal infection one can do is uh, you can eat a lot of probiotic things which normally uh, what we take is the curd or the yogurt you can increase its intake which helps in uh, uh, growing good bacteria in the vagina as well as in your gut and further prevents any uh, risk of fungal infection but yes it is not just the food that can prevent your fungal infection you need to practice uh, the uh, uh, safe perineal hygiene practices to prevent your fungal uh, to prevent any kind of vaginal infections okay and uh, now we will be moving to a next set of questions and these are the questions that have been picked up by the community that we have on women's health so for all the people who are new to the to the live or new to tip media uh, we have a community dedicated to women's health named as shefit if you would like to join the community you can just go to the bio and uh, click on the link and you'll get the link to join the community there so these are the questions that uh, you know people from the community wanted to ask you dr garima um, yeah so the first question is can drinking too much water cure uti or vaginal infection can prevent or can cause can cure cure yeah it can cure definitely uh, be, uh, not a vaginal infection per se but yes it can definitely cure the uh, urinary tract infection any asymptomatic bacteria that is growing in your uh, urinary tract uh, can be flushed out if you drink a lot of water a lot of water means at least 3 to 4 liters of water every day which is uh, definitely it prevents your uh, uti also and it prevents any risk of stone formation also okay and uh, what happens if somebody has an infection say uti or vaginitis for a very long time uh if you have a this vaginitis or uti for a long time if you have vaginitis per se then uh, this veg, this vaginal infection can ascend upwards and uh, first is your vagina then above that is the cervix which is the mouth of the uterus and then above that is the uterus and then opening of the uterus is into directly to the abdominal or the pelvic cavity so any infection which you 
contract from the from below can ascend upwards and can go into your pelvic or the abdominal region also and then it can lead to something which is known as pelvic inflammatory disease and then you have uh, a lot of chronic pelvic pain and which uh, which is very difficult to treat because then it becomes a lot resistant to the antibiotics and then it can uh, further lead to uh infections in the uterus infections in the fallopian tubes and infection in the ovary which can uh, in future lead to uh, problems of infertility also oh okay got it uh and uh, uti you were talking about uh, uti also yeah. so if you don't treat uti timely then uh, you can have same kind of ascending infection up to the kidneys also which can lead to something called as pyelonephritis and obviously can lead to dysfunction of the kidneys also okay so if anybody has got any uti or vaginitis you should definitely consult a gynecologist yes. to prevent all that uh next question is are home remedies or cloves specifically help in protection of vaginal infections uh as i told you before uh the food relation to preventing uh, uh vaginal infection is not shown much uh th there is only single association of food that is the probiotics in the form of curd or the yogurt or the supplements that we may we can take uh prevents clove as such has not shown much evidence but yes there is no harm in taking clove uh, because it has other uh, beneficial effects on the body but it cannot cure uh, vaginal infection completely it cannot cure uh, you cannot uh, use food remedies to cure uh, some infection you can okay. use them to prevent infection okay okay and can sea buckthorn help in this sorry can sea buckthorn uh, another home remedy help in this uh, i'm not sure uh, as far as i know uh, it does not have any effect but uh, i'm not very sure about it because i have not heard of it before all right uh, so one of the members asked how can a pregnant woman uh, you know treat vaginal infection and like is it different for for a pregnant woman as compared to a normal one yes so uh, the same antibiotics that we use for a non pregnant women to uh, cure their vaginitis cannot usually cannot be used to cure the uh, vaginitis in the pregnant women so first if any pregnant women has any symptoms of ex uh, profuse vaginal discharge or any uh, itching or uh, the change in the smell in the pineal area they should first consult the gynecologist and not pop up any antibiotics which they thought they took uh, when they were non pregnant because there are certain antibiotics which we cannot use when you are pregnant so uh, one thing and yes it can be cured and uh, with the help of uh, certain antibiotics depending upon what is the cause of your uh, vaginitis and uh, and it is it definitely needs to be cured because if in case the vaginitis continues it can lead to it can lead to preterm labor also in pregnant women okay got it uh next question that we have is uh, is vaginal discharge normal uh yes i told before also there is uh, think there is norm every woman has a uh, normal discharge as i have explained before also the discharge uh, changes with the change with the uh, change of the phase of the menstrual cycle so normally everyone has a thick or a sticky discharge which is which has a peculiar kind of smell and uh, it changes its consistency and the uh, the volume also changes when the uh, female is ovulating so when the female is ovulating she has a very watery and a very stretchy kind of discharge normally she has a thick and a sticky kind and when in the mid of the cycle she will have a very watery and a stretchy one so uh, yes a normal this, this is a normal discharge and which is perfectly normal with all the females and there was an addition to this question that an 8 years old girl ha is having a vaginal uh, you know discharge a white discharge so is it something to worry about uh as i told uh, the uh, vaginal area is uh, always a little bit of moist area so 
a small amount of discharge a small amount of milky discharge also not exactly milky a little bit of whitish discharge is perfectly normal and unless you have any smell or you think that uh, you have or there is any associated itching along with that otherwise uh, it is perfectly normal for a 18 year old girl to have any kind of minimal discharge okay and uh, what happens when women enter into a menopausal phase so will that vary will the uh, infection vary in that phase in the late 30s or say early 40s yes so when you have uh, menopause then uh, all the hormones of the bodies are withdrawn in that scenario the discharge uh, there is Uh, because your periods also stops the hormones are uh, at the, at a very lower level the estrogens and the progesterones are almost zero in your body then what you have uh, you the vagina and the uh, vulvar area becomes very dry so in that scenario usually you, you don't you might have something called as atrophic vaginitis because there is loss of hormones and the area becomes very dry and then you can have a superimposed infection because the area is now dry and then you can have bacterial infections over that area okay got it uh there is another question in the comment section on lubricants so can lubricants okay. also cause vaginal infection no lubricants does not cause vaginal infections and uh, but when you are using lubricants uh, during the intercourse or any sexual practices you should always douche your area as soon as uh, uh, this the activity is over so lubricants as such does not cause any harm to you okay so nazma i hope you got the answer and we have another question on uh intimation after intimation somebody gets an allergy so does it have something to do with infections yes so uh, i i think by allergy they means that after the intercourse they have any itching right so uh, there are several other factors that you can have itching one is you might be allergic to the uh, to the latex of the condom that you are using or you might be contracting a little bit of infection after each sexual practices so you should always uh, if you are having itching or what you call as allergy after each uh, after you become intimate you should always ask your partner whether he or she has any uh, um, any kind of itching or any kind of discharge from their private parts that you might be contracting on each uh, uh, intercourse episodes of intercourse and then you should always check yourself also whether after the being intimate whether after that you have any increase itching or increase vaginal discharge the next day okay. and if in case you are having you should always check up with your gynecologist so that means it's like transferable of yeah it is you are getting uh, the infection is be being transmitted uh, by your partner to you oh okay got it so that is something that everybody needs to be i think careful about and i think most of the people don't even know that so yes uh my last question would be any you know quick tips that you would like to give to all the women out there uh when it comes to preventing vaginal infections yes uh, so one thing is uh, as i all as i previously also told that uh, the first thing is there is no need to use any costly feminine products all you can do is you can wash your perineal area twice daily just with plain water and if you want to use any soap also you can use those mild unscented soaps also and the second thing is you should always clean you should always use uh, first of all you should always change your panties or the underwear every day you could always use a cotton one and uh, so that uh, the area is all breathable and uh, then uh, after each uh, sexual activity or sexual intercourse you should always clean your area should always urinate after that and then uh, when you are using any public toilets or anything always clean that toilet and then sit and uh, the uh, last would be uh, and during your menstrual cycles you should always change your uh, tampons or the sanitary pads every 4 to 6 hours okay perfect uh so that for all the questions that i had and the audience had uh dr darima thank you so much for joining us today
and it was a wonderful uh, live session you covered all the points so beautifully and i think thank you so really much able to get so much help from this um, thank you for all the people who are asking uh for the recordings yes you'll get the recording of this session on our youtube channel and we'll also be posting all the recordings on our instagram channel and that was it from our end uh you can just follow dr garima her profile is linked right above here you can go follow her you can follow tip media and you can also join our women's health community shifted by clicking on the link in the bio thank you so much dr garima thanks for your time. thank you so much manek thank you so much Thank you. We'll see you again. Sure. Okay. Bye. Bye.